What's up guys? Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com. In today's video, we're going to talk about some simple tips that can make modeling in SketchUp a lot easier and faster. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. So just a quick reminder that the SketchUp Essentials Black Friday course closes at end of day today, 11.59 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. So this deal allows you to get 50% off of the monthly membership or even more off of an annual membership to the SketchUp Essentials course. So remember that this course is going to give you the information to not only learn the fundamentals of modeling in SketchUp, but then taking you to the next step and teaching you how to create plans from your models in layout, as well as how to create 3D renderings in twin motion. So um, I kind of created this to try to be a start to finish training um, for SketchUp, but then also for your other 3D modeling skills. Note that within the course, we also have both live calls where you you can get on calls and ask questions as well as our community forum where you can go if you get stuck you can also interact with other students um, other things like that so if you've been looking for a resource that's going to help you learn how to not only use SketchUp but also use layout and also create some renderings make sure you check out that course like I said that sale does end at end of day today you can check it out at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. All right, so in this video, I just wanted to give you some tips of things that you may or may not use when you're modeling in SketchUp that are gonna make your life a little bit easier. They might kind of speed up your workflow. Um, some of them may not be things that you necessarily use, but they're worth at least knowing how to use them. And so the first tip, that I would recommend is say that you've got a building like this one and you've modeled out the front of this building. Um, and a lot of the time, you know, the typical SketchUp workflow is you just kind of like push pull this back or you offset this out in order to create a roof ridge across the front. Um, but in this case, what I'm doing, because I want this to be kind of a wall on the front, I've modeled this out separately. Now what I could do on the back wall is I could model this same wall out, right, by drawing a line making it the same height and then just like manually modeling this in but it's going to be a lot faster for me to just come in here and select this geometry and then use the move tool in copy mode to copy this back so that is something that you could definitely consider is instead of remodeling copy geometry that you've already created for repeating situations like this and reuse it in order to save time okay and so the next thing is say that i've got a building like this and i want to model out a roof so I'm just gonna come in here, I'm gonna offset this out by whatever the thickness is that I think that the roof assembly is going to be. I, I called this six inches, but it can be whatever you want it to be. But then let's say that I was to come in here and start modeling out that roof like this. Well now, I could push pull this roof across in order to create the roof. That's basically what we're going for. But the thing is, if I do that right now, and I create this roof, notice how it's gonna be raw geometry in here the same way that the rest of my raw geometry is. So then if I wanna take that and I wanna put it in a group and then hide it later, um, I have to do that after the fact and I'm suddenly dealing with all this raw geometry. Well, what you can do instead is before you extrude, group this. So just double click on this whole thing in order to select the edges and the face in here, right click and click on make group. Now, this is already a roof, and I can just push pull it out 12 inches or whatever I want it to be, and I can do the same thing on the backside. But now, because this is a separate assembly, right, because I grouped it before I extruded it, it's really easy for me to just tag it, put that group of geometry on a tag, and now I have a roof that I can toggle on and off, just like this. So consider grouping geometry before you extrude um, as kind of a time-saving tactic in SketchUp. All right, so next up, use guides in order to set um, locations of things that you wanna place in your models. So in this case, right, what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the tape measure tool and you can tap the control key. And when you tap the control key, a little plus shows up next to the tape measure. Well, what that means is that means that I'm now in a mode where I can create guides. And since I can create guides, this makes it really easy for me to basically create, this is almost like snapping a chalk line in real life. But if I was to um, set up these guides right here, these are non-destructive visual indicators in SketchUp. And what I can do is say that I want my door to be 12 feet wide. I can set guides up for both doors right here. And then I can set up a guide that's going to give me the height 
of those doors. So say that they're gonna be, we'll call it 12 feet tall as well. Now I have guides on this wall that I can use as inference points for where my doors are going to go. And I can do the same thing over here on the side of my building. So for example, I can just um, set a three foot high indicator because I think I'm gonna put a wainscot on here. Then I'm gonna say my windows are gonna start 18 inches above that and they're gonna be six feet high. So again, now I've got this line in here where I can see where those windows would go. But now it's really easy for me to come in here and draw on this surface um, and use a tool like the push-pull tool in order to cut my openings like this. And so one thing you sometimes want is you want to be able to figure out where things would be with equally spaced points in your model. Well, one thing that you can do, and I'm going to draw a quick segment across this edge right here so I can pick up a midpoint. But what you can do is you can draw a line across the surface right here, and then you can right click on it and you can divide it. And so by dividing it, what it's gonna do is it's gonna divide this edge into an equally spaced number of segments. Well, if I pick five segments, you can see how that's going to give me four points that are equally spaced along my wall. Well, then I could come in here with the rectangle tool and find those points, right? And then I can tap the control key in order to set the center like this. So now it's a center rectangle, but then I can type in the dimension I want. So in this case, I want a six foot comma four foot opening like this. And so now what I've done is I've spaced, is I've found one opening that I can cut a hole with in my wall. Well, then what I can do is I can use the move tool in copy mode and I can move my mouse and I can set these on each one of these points. And remember, move tool and copy mode works by you selecting an object, tapping the M key, and then when you tap control, this is gonna put you in copy mode, allowing you to create a copy. Now, another thing, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go up to edit, and I'm going to erase or delete my guides right here. And so one thing that I'm probably gonna do, because I probably want windows on the other wall as well, is I'm just going to select these and use the move tool and copy mode to copy these across as well. Well, when I do that, that's gonna place these on these walls and it's gonna split this wall up like this. Well, now all I have to do is use the push-pull tool to push-pull this back like this in order to create my openings. Now, one thing to note about that is remember that the push-pull tool has memory associated with it. What that means is that means that I don't have to keep moving my mouse in order to find this back wall um, or moving over this until it cuts the hole. All I have to do is just double click like this and the push pull tool is going to repeat the last action that it, um, it created or it did. And so what that means is that means that when I push pull this back, it's going to remember that I've push pulled it back, in this case, four inches. And it might be worth coming in here and reversing these faces like this. But if I push pull this back four inches, all I have to do is just come in here and double click like this in order to quick, quickly push pull those to that same length. And then I might come in here and clean up some of this geometry, but now we've got those openings in here that we're ready to fill in. And so one thing that can be extremely valuable to you when you're modeling in SketchUp is use the geometry you have for whatever functions you want to do. And so what I mean by that is what I would like to do is I would like to create a wainscot that's like three feet high of brick on this wall. And then I want the rest of it to be like a metal panel. Now, what I could do is I could come in here and just start drawing, right? I could draw a line up to three feet and then I could draw across, across, across all the way around. That's a valid way of doing that, but there's a faster way. What you can do is you can pick up this geometry. So I'm just gonna double click on this. I'm gonna do a shift. I'm gonna double click right here. And I've picked up all of that base geometry. Well, now I can just move that geometry up using the move tool in copy mode to whatever I want my height to be. And notice how that's gonna move that up like this. Now, one thing about that is it definitely does, it definitely does split the inside geometry as well if you do the double click method. So you might come in here and just select the outside edges instead. But again, I'm just gonna use the move tool in copy mode and copy this up. And that geometry is gonna come in here and it's gonna split this surface like this. Now you do wanna to try to remember to pick up all of the edges 
because I missed a couple in here, but that's a fast, easy way to split out your geometry in SketchUp. And so one thing that I might wanna do is because this is gonna be like a stone or a brick wainscot, I wanna add a little cap on top of this, like a cast stone cap. And so what I can do is I can model out the profile of a cap and say this is gonna hang out maybe six inches. I'm not sure what an appropriate length for a cap would be, so we're just gonna say six inches. I'm gonna say that it's gonna be maybe an inch and a half thick. And so what we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to use the follow me tool to extrude this around. All right, so we're gonna select the path all the way around. We'll activate the follow me tool and then we'll extrude this. That's gonna give us our cap. Now the problem with our cap right now though, is if we do that, this is just going to be raw geometry. And so raw geometry is not great because this is just gonna merge. And again, it just kind of creates problems in general. So what I'm gonna do instead is before I use the follow me tool on this, I'm going to group it. But then I'm gonna come through here and I'm gonna select the path on the outside. And in this case, I'm just gonna to toggle X-ray mode so that I can see the line through the walls. But now I've got this whole path selected, right? Well, now what I can do is I can activate that follow me tool, but this object is in a group, meaning if I click on it, it's not going to work. But if I select that path, activate follow me, and then I right click on this object and click on edit group. Now, if I click on this surface, Notice how the follow me tool is still active. Well, when the follow me tool is still active, what that means is that means that I can use this to extrude that extrude along that path, but this, um, this final extrusion that's created in here is going to be created in a group, meaning that I can now edit that and adjust that if I decide that I wanna do that. But I'm just gonna create a copy of this right here. All right, so one thing that I really recommend when you get to this point in your models is first off, you should probably have everything grouped so that this raw geometry isn't merging with everything else. So I'm probably gonna come in here and I'm gonna group this floor. And then I'm also going to triple click, right click, and I'm gonna group all of my walls as well, just so that's kind of clean. Um, that means I can also like hide the different parts of my model if I want to do that, or I can tag them. But now that we're at this point, one of the things I really recommend is instead of trying to model stuff manually, you use the 3D warehouse. And so what I want to do is I want to go in the SketchUp 3D warehouse. And first off, I want to add some windows. So we're going to use the windows from Marvin Windows. So a lot of manufacturers actually have their windows in the warehouse. But if I scroll down, I'm going to pick maybe this modern casement window right here. Note that this has a tag on it saying that it's dynamic. That's actually going to be really important because that means that you can use this in order to resize the window in your openings. So if I bring this in and I place it on this wall, I want to make sure that I'm placing it properly in here. But if I right click on this window and click on dynamic components, component options, notice how I can actually come in here and I can adjust the window. So I can type in a different width and a different height. So in this case, I want my height to be 72 inches and notice how this window automatically adjusts to fit in my wall. And so there's a lot of things you can adjust with this, but you can see how this makes your life a lot easier. Now, another thing that's going to make your life a lot easier is you know how we talked about you could use the move tool in copy mode in order to create copies. Well, what you could do is you could create a new copy for each one of these, but that's gonna be kind of time consuming. What you can do instead is with the move tool active, you can tap the control key to go into move mode or a uh, copy mode, and you can create one copy. But now, and notice how I haven't clicked on anything else, I can type in times or star and a number of copies. So I can type in times three and hit the enter key. That's gonna create three equally spaced copies based on the information I gave this. And then from here, what I would do is I would use the move tool in copy mode again, copy these over here, and then I would probably use the flip tool in order to flip these just to make sure that they are oriented properly. And then I'm gonna move them back in my wall just like this. And so I would do the same thing with garage doors. So I'm just going to type in glass garage door 
and I'm actually gonna use one of these, this is perfect. So we'll use this Amar aluminum full door. That's basically what I wanted anyway. I'm gonna click on download, drop this in like this. Now, one thing um, about objects like this is notice that the move tool gives you the ability to rotate objects by clicking on these little points. So what that means is that means instead of me having to activate the move tool, find a base point, blah, 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 what I can do instead is I can just activate the move tool and I can just click on one of these points and I can rotate this in place like this. So I can rotate this 180 degrees like this and then I can move this back so that it's aligned with my opening. So in this case, I wanna move this so it's back aligned with my opening. Now, one thing to note about these is these are also dynamic, meaning you can go into your component options and you can set both your door height. So in this case, my door height would be 12 feet. And you can also set your door width, which in this case, I think my opening is 12 feet, so that should be fine. But notice how that adjusted right here. Well, then I can just kind of move this over and place it and we're good to go. And then again, I'm just gonna use the move tool in copy mode to create a copy right here. So now I've got my two garage doors in here like this. And that was really easy to do. I didn't have to actually model out garage doors. All right, and then let's say that we wanted to create a planting bed off to the side of our house, All right? So we're gonna say we've got maybe a five foot planting bed over here. So all I would do is just draw a shape like this, probably just add like a mulch material, maybe like this one right here. I'm gonna go ahead and group it so it's not sitting out here as raw geometry, but now I just wanna add some plants or some shrubs. So I'm just gonna look for shrubs. And so I'm just gonna search for a plant and maybe we'll say that we're gonna put some of these plants in. So I'm just gonna select this. This is a Dynascape model. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna bring this in. I'm gonna place it. Well, in this case, what I wanna do is I don't just want one plant, I want multiple plants, but I'm not sure what exactly the spacing should be of these plants. Well, one of the things you can do with the move tool in copy mode is if you make a copy over here, remember we already talked about making arrays in multiply mode. Well, if I type in a forward slash and type in a number of copies and notice how this is still live as long as I don't click off of this, I can type in divided by and a number of copies, and this is going to create an equally spaced number of copies between this point and this point. So I can use this in order to really quickly add these plant models inside of SketchUp. All right, and then finally, and this isn't really a modeling tip, but it is something that's worth noting, you might not like all of the materials inside of the SketchUp material library. Like the, the SketchUp material library is fine, but it's a little bit limited. So in the sense that I've only got a couple options in here for things like siding or metal panels. And so if I wanted to put siding on these walls, I'm kind of limited to this and it's kind of like low resolution. You might try going to a website like 3dassets.one, which is going to search multiple different websites and downloading some higher resolution materials. So you can download things like these higher resolution iron files. And most of these are available to download for free from a lot of different websites. So you can use this in order to um, really find some more quality materials, but then you can just add a custom material. So in this case, I'm gonna click right here and you just need to reference a texture image. And so I downloaded a metal panel from one of these websites, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna bring that in and we're gonna place it on our building. And one thing that we probably wanna do is we want to rotate that material. So you can right click in here, you can use position texture and you can right click and rotate your material like this. Now I'm gonna resample this because this is a material that I adjusted, but I can use this in order to rotate the direction that this material is facing. And then in this case, I want this one to be a little bit bigger. So I don't necessarily want it to be that big, but I want it to be bigger than it was. We'll go ahead and leave it like this for right now. But you can use this in order to bring in these higher quality, different looking textures and materials in order to make your models look better in SketchUp. All right, so hopefully some of those tips were helpful to you. The little tips and tricks are what can save you a ton of time in SketchUp. If you wanna learn more about this, make sure you check out the SketchUp Essentials course. Um, I will link to that on this page. That is gonna be on sale through end of day today. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.